this, me Butch, and about six and hours and 25 minutes ago, we had like a, a good bit of a tremor here in uh, East Tennessee because the epicenter of the earthquake, the weak shaking earthquake we had, might have been a bit more powerful and closer to Decatur, Tennessee, which is in Meigs County. Um, that might have been a little bit stronger, but we had it here at about like 9, oh no, not 9, about 4.14 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So yeah, it was pretty scary because it was just it was kind of unexpected and I thought it was like a train making a lot of vibration down below here in the depot at, um, over there at CSX station not far from here, like a mile. But the more I felt it, the more I said, okay, this is not that. And it was pretty darn creepy. And my dog was just laying there. Herbert just laying there like he is now, being lazy. <laughs> and it wasn't until I started getting up that he got up. you think dogs would um, know that kind of stuff. But um, there wasn't a dog last night kind of making any barking sounds or whatever. Or no cars going off or alarm. Because it wasn't that strong. But it was strong enough to let you know that it was here. And I think really, too, if we consider that... Um, uh, let's see here. I'm trying to make sure I, I know the right scripture I was reading to you. Yep, okay. Um, if we consider that, then we ought to know that Jesus is definitely coming. You know, and um, he is, um, he doesn't come real slow like other Bible versions say, He who shall come quickly. You know, so uh, we better punch your tickets and be ready. We be need to be ready against the day that the Lord will come because there are things, there are clues all over the place. It's just not like things like 9-11, terrorist bombings and stuff like that. People getting shoot, shot in schools, that should be a wake-up call to a lot of people, to Christians more, more so than anything. It should be a wake-up call, but sometimes it seems like it's not. We were at the game last night, me and my son, a basketball game, and I thought to myself, I remember thinking to myself, too, about that, and now the more I think about it, it's like, what if there's an earthquake here, and we're in this dome-shaped building, and things just start falling down on the floor? You know, I'm just looking up at the ceiling and everything, looking at the soccer net they had. So what if that happens, you know? And another thing, too, it was, um, they had some kind of dance squad there, some lightning, that's what they call it, Central Head. And they, like, award-winning because they get out there, these girls, and I'm sure a lot of their parents are Christian parents, and I'm sure they are too. But they went out there and they're, they were dancing very provocatively, uh, shaking the tushes and other parts that shouldn't have been shaking, and things like that. I, I just think I didn't think it was necessary for all that stuff, and that's one of the reasons I didn't really want to go because you know stuff like that. Uh, other than that, though, it was a good game and. And I enjoyed watching it, and I enjoyed some of the sportsmanship that I've seen in the, in the game there. I like watching the game with sportsmanship. Uh, but anyway, I thought to myself, what if that happened, you know, there? You know, how would people react? You know, they would all be like, oh, scary. You know, if we have tornadoes in here, and we know they're coming here in this, um, uh, this part of the state, and they are tornadoes, we ought to be realizing and expecting that, hey, earthquakes can happen too, and we need to be ready. So the same thing with our spiritual conditions, we need to be ready. And a lot of people, a lot of Christians, aren't ready. So if just like we need to be ready for things like earthquakes and tornadoes and natural disasters, we also need to be ready for the Lord Jesus Christ to come back any time. Because he can come back right now, you know. There's nothing stopping him from coming, and the prophecy's all been fulfilled, you know. And um, just looking at you know Jerusalem, um, all what's going on there and everything. I think the temple's supposed to build, be built and stuff like that. But anyway, um, there's really um, no excuse for Christians not to be ready if we know the Lord Jesus Christ. And things might catch us off guard, but in our hearts or spiritually, we, we should be ready and waiting to go up to be with him. Or if we die, then we know where we're going. But unfortunately, a lot of other Christians don't, they're not ready for this. 
they're not ready for something that might bad might happen to them because they're, they're so uh, so um, focused on Christmas and stuff like that and what it means is the most wonderful time of the year and all this bloody 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 stuff and they don't they forget what Christmas really is it's not about a holiday it's about Jesus Christ really Christmas isn't no let me take that back Christmas isn't about Jesus Christ Christmas is about something with his name in it that the Catholics cooked up many years ago and that's what that's about and we decide to take one day out of the year and celebrate that Jesus' birth nobody knows when he was born so we decided to make it on a day that he wasn't born on and I don't want to even get started on that because I might upset some of you but that's just too bad you just had to read your Bible and see what the Bible says and most of everybody I talk to are King James Bible believers here so I'm glad about that um, <clears throat> anyway we need to be ready and so if we look at um, what it says here as far as earthquakes and the things that are happening and unfortunately like I said some of those kids oh man they, the way they were dancing those girls um, I don't know how the parents let them do it but it, it's like anything could have happened it could have caught them kids off guard it could have caught them players off guard <clears throat> everybody shouting there having fun eating drinking and being merry and stuff like that next thing you know disaster comes everybody's panicking trying to get out of the gym but luckily fortunately by the grace of God that didn't happen not luckily fortunately by the grace of God that didn't happen fortunately it didn't happen last night fortunately uh, it didn't happen at a greater scale than what we had in um, Decatur, Tennessee, which is about like 12, 13 miles from here, maybe more, in Meigs County. And that's what, then, matter of fact, that's where the uh, um, the team was that played against the Chargers in, in Central. That's where they were from. They were from um, uh, Meigs County. How about that? The same place that the earthquake hit there, the 4.4 magnitude. Fortunately, nothing bad happened. Of just a shaking but if you read Matthew 24 this is what it says I want to give reference to it here in God's Word from all the way to verse uh, I think it's 30 or 40 so I'm going to read part of that it says and Jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple and Jesus said unto him see ye not all these things rarely I say unto you there shall not be left here one stone upon the other that shall not be thrown down and as he said upon the Mount of Olives the disciples came unto him privately saying tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the signs of thy coming and of the end of the world doesn't mean the earth is going to explode it means the end of the world as we know it uh, people how they live are the world civilization you know it's the nations the people who make up the nations it's not the earth itself so much and Jesus answered and said unto them take heed that no man deceive you for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes and diverse places means different places and these are the beginning of sorrows then they uh, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and ye shall be hated of all of all nations for my name's sake and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another uh, see here and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many and that's what's happening today we got a lot of people on there Benny Hinn 
um, T.D. Jakes, um, what's his name, um, that lady, oh gosh, I keep forgetting her name, there's that lady on there, Joe Osteen, and all the rest of them, Jimmy Swagger in most cases, and let's see here, and even unfortunately, there was Billy Graham, because if he was a good preacher, I mean, if he, everybody made out that he was the greatest preacher of all time, that, well, if you're a great preacher, if you're preaching for God, if you're preaching for the Lord Jesus Christ, and not by what man says you're doing, preaching how you should preach, then you're not going to be famous. And it's like I just said here, they're going to offer you, and you're going to be hated of all people. Jimmy's, I mean, Billy Graham would have been hated of all people, just like um, Ruckman. You know, he was hated. Nobody liked him, but he preached God's word. You know, and Sam Gipp, nobody don't like him. He's crude at times, yeah, but nobody likes him. And he's going around teaching people the truth. You know, teaching that there's one Bible, the true word of God, and not many, because there's uh, people who are out there deceiving, just like I said here. There are people out here deceived, claiming to be prophets or not, taking doctrine and twisting it around. <clears throat> and many pro false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Wow. The lawlessness of iniquity. The love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached unto all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, when readeth, whoso readeth, let him understand. So you need to cash your chicken, and you need to punch your ticket, and understand who the Lord Jesus Christ is by faith, and read his word. Then you can understand these things by the power of the Holy Spirit. Not of your own understanding, but by God's Holy Spirit. That's how you understand God's word. You can't understand it by reading it and by getting into it, especially if you're not understanding it by a false Bible. You have to understand it by the Holy Spirit. Not about what man said, his his doctrines. You have to get into it yourself and ask the Lord yourself what these things mean. And let's see here. Then let them which he then let them which be in Judah flee into the mountains. Let him which is in the house stop not come down to take anything out of his house let me skip down here to uh, verse 38 okay all right let me stick let me stick here to um verse 35 on down heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall not pass away everything that the lord has said it will not pass away and he said, spoken the true words, and the words we need are in English. Not in Greek, the ambiguity of the Greek. We don't speak Greek. We don't speak Judean. We are Israeli. We speak English here in the United States. We therefore we need an English Bible, the authorized version, not the ones that have been changed. For filthy lucre. You get a copyright. But when it doesn't have copyright, at least for us it doesn't. Uh, let's see here. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. <clears throat> For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, and one shall be taken, and the other left. Two women shall be grinding in the, at the mill, the one shall be taken, the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not the hour your Lord doth come. But know this that it <clears throat> but know this that if the good men of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched, and would not have suffered his house to be broken into broken in, broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think, not the Son of Man cometh. Uh, 
And who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, household to give him meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Can I read it because it's light red lettering? Okay. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. So be ready. Be watching. Be willing. And because you don't know when the Lord is coming. And let's see here. Luke 14. 17 rather. I thought I had it in Matthew there. But I didn't. Uh, it's just like it was saying here. In like Also in the days of Noah. It talks about that as well. But also in the days of Lot. And that's another thing people are doing. And it's not to pick at those who are in sodomy or whatever or LGBT or anything like that. But it is saying what it says. I mean, sin is sin. You can call it whatever you want. But it's, it still is what it is. And sin comes in many forms. You know, and it can be drinking, it can be smoking, hurting your body or something like that. It can be a lot of things. It can be um, hurting your body between other people. You know, and something that the Lord does not represent. It could be self-love or, or self-pleasuring or stuff like that. It can be a lot of things. It can be um, loving others um, in a way that they shouldn't be loved. You know, and um, the love of pleasure is basically what it boils down to. Sin. And if we read chapter 17. Okay. Where is that? Um, so, yeah, 28. So likewise also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. The same thing here. We buy property, we sell property, we build it, we eat. And it's like no big deal. You know, people are making money hand over fist building these mega malls and mega um, mega baseball football stadiums and things like that we're, you know we're eating drinking and being married uh, men are marrying men and women are marrying women and things like that nobody really pays attention to all this stuff as long I mean to what what the word of God says that is you know and so it's no big deal we're just all enjoying life you know we're all getting by and all having it going down to the daily grind of uh, what's going on in the world as far as what's going with uh, on with us and it takes something to shake us out of our comfort zone like a uh, terrorist attack like a 9-11 type of episode or something like that circumstance or travesty to really shake us to a core and say hey things are boiling down things are being shaking down shaking down and the Lord is coming, so you get better get ready. You better punch a ticket and get ready. You know, know who the Lord Jesus Christ is. You know, come to save the knowledge of Jesus Christ. It's not in Allah, it's not in Muhammad, and it's not in a Krishna or Krishna, whoever, or a Brahma or other false religions. It's not in the Church of Scientology or the Mormons or Jehovah's Witnesses or or uh, 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 Illuminati or anything like that because we know there's Illuminati we know they do things we know that they are greedy people and stuff and they want to take over the world it's not in people and presidents who passed away and honoring them it's not in giving honor to any man it's the honor and glorifying the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior to salvation that's what it's all about you honor and acknowledge him and find the truth in him for who he is and what he's done for you these things won't take you by surprise but it's like those girls last night they were doing all that provocative stuff and probably people watch this the kind of thing um, um, might not like me saying that especially the people who are around this area see it they might not like me saying that but it was it was provocative and how you can win an award for something like that I don't know I mean what if the earthquake happened there last night and it was stronger Boy, those people would be freaking out. Oh, they would drop that routine like that. And they would be going for cover, not to get hit in the head by a lamp or something, light on the ceiling. And 
you know, that's what that's, that's what it takes to get us out of our comfort zone sometime. An earthquake, a natural disaster. Say, hey, you need Jesus, and you need to get ready. You need to have your ticket punched and get ready to go. That's all there is to it. And you can find that in God's Word, the Holy Bible, Authorized Version of King James Bible, not any other one. Sorry, that's just a fact. Get Jesus and get ready.